You're watching the Believer's Voice of Victory Network. Real life faith. Good evening, everybody. We're Pastors George and Terry Pearsons, and we're coming to you live right now from Eagle Mountain International Church, Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And if you've heard the news today, there was an attack in a school where 17 young people were killed and others were injured. And we are here tonight to begin this service. And this was going to be a Valentine's service, and we'll see how it goes and see how the direction of it goes. But we're here to pray. The sheriff of Broward County, I heard him on the news. He said, I need your prayers. So we are here to pray tonight. And I am so glad that you're here with us. And if we can, if we can get a shot, you can pull back a little bit and show right now we have this, the congregation right here. We are at the altar along with our 1440 students. And we are believing God tonight and standing in the gap for all of those. We love them. We love those families. We love those children. And we love our God. And we're going to see things change. We're seeing things change. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless Jesus. the Lord. Oh, merciful. Thank God. you, Lord Jesus. Merciful. Thank merciful. You, merciful. Glory to God. Merciful. You all pray with us out there as we pray here together. Thank you, Jesus. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord. There is absolutely nothing that your love cannot touch and reach and heal and mend. Lord, for all that the devil has done, we intercede tonight. We ask on behalf of every parent. Every teacher, every family member, every every member of the county, the churches, the pastors, the leaders, everyone affected, grandparents and sisters and brothers. Oh, Father, for every one of them, Lord, we're praying that by the very grace and love of God, that every strategy that the devil had, it comes to an end. It will go no further. We thank you for that. We ask you for that. We thank you, Father, that your mercy and your goodness is well able to touch, well able, well able to help. So we're praying for them. Lord, we lift up the mothers in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, we lift up them. Thank you, Jesus. We lift up their hearts and their souls. Oh, yes. We lift them up to you, Lord. Lord, you Thank know who they are. Thank you know you know each and every one of them. You know their fears. You know their thoughts. You know their panic. You know their grief. You feel it all. Jesus has felt it all. Lord, you are easily touched by the feelings of the weaknesses and the hurts and the pains. So we pray for them. We pray, Thank Lord, you, that their hearts be touched and that you comfort them, you strengthen them, you help them, Lord, to stand up in the inside. And Lord, most of all, that they would learn, uh, look to you, that their eyes would turn to you. You are not the cause. You're not the enemy. You're not the killer. You didn't let anybody down, but you're, you are there. Thank you, Father. You are there. You are there. And we pray, Lord, for fathers. Pray for the fathers, Pastor George. Oh, God, we lift up the fathers to you right now. These fathers, these precious men, these men who are fighting for their own children's lives right now. And, Lord, we stand with them. We surround them. We lift them up, Lord God, and thank you for an impartation of such grace from God. Grace is coming down on them right now. Grace is rising up from within them right now. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping them take their place to stand for their families and stand strong for them. Oh, God, the fathers, the fathers, the fathers, oh, Lord. Spirit of grief, you bow your knee to the name which is above every name. Oh, Jesus himself bore their griefs and carried their sorrows. And in Jesus' name, there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. <coughs> There's a lifting up right now. <laughs> victory, 
Lord, we pray over teachers in the name of Jesus. Lord, the ones that were uh, in the in the presence of this. And Lord, it is okay. Deliver them. Deliver them, Lord. Deliver them from the evil one. Deliver them from fear. Deliver them from nightmares. Deliver them from panic. Deliver them from grief. Deliver them from sorrow. Deliver them from hatred. Deliver them from unforgiveness. Deliver them. Deliver them. Deliver them. And Lord, for every one of them, parents, students, teachers, administrators, uh, uh, every one of them, Lord, that knows you, may the light of the glorious gospel shine in them, strengthen them, equip them, embolden them, speak to them, and give them answers, Lord, when others do not have any. The blood of Jesus. Yeah. The blood of Jesus. 
the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus over these families. To wash and cleanse. The blood of Jesus over brothers and sisters. Over mothers and fathers. Aunts, uncles, grandparents. Oh Lord, the blood of Jesus that helps us to overcome. To overcome the enemy. To overcome everything. Father, we pray over those that are in hospitals right now. And thank you, Lord, for the healing, miracle, power of God rising up on the inside of them. No more. No more. No more. Miracles. In critical condition. In the name Miracles, of Jesus, oh we ask your, for your intervention. Miracles. We ask for your healing, healing, Miracles, the healing oh work of the Almighty. We're in prayer right now, Lord, for doctors and nurses and surgeons. And Lord, wherever necessary, move on every level. Move on every level, Lord, spirit and soul and body on every level, spirit. And soul and body for every uh, everyone affected. Thank you, spirit Thank you. and soul, soul and, and body. body. Spirit yes. answers spirit for the soul. spirit. Comfort for the soul. Healing for the body. Lord, we're asking for miracles. I'm asking for miracles to erase all impact from their minds. Erase it. Just erase it. Erase, Lord, by the hand of Jesus. Erase them in the name of Jesus. Doctors. Yeah, and first responders, Lord. Doctors. First responders, Lord. Doctors. Police officers. SWAT teams. Oh God, oh God, I pray, I pray over those parents right now whose sons and daughters who have died are still in that building. And Lord, I thank you that the haunting spirit of fear and destruction is removed from them and the comfort of the Holy Spirit is coming upon them right now, right now, right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, hold them, hold them, hold those families, uplift those families, comfort those families in a supernatural way right now. And the raising of the dead. And the raising of the dead. Yes. 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 Lord, we thank you that in the love of Jesus, in the face of Jesus, in the presence of Jesus, is the satisfying sweetness of the Master, is the satisfying comfort of the Savior, is the satisfying deliverance of the gentle shepherd. We're so thankful. We're so thankful. And that all, 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 and that, Lord, we turn all of our faith, all of our anger, all of our defiance, all of our vengeance, Lord. We turn it not against mankind, but we turn it against the spirits that drive men. We turn it against the sources, Lord. Lord, we, we don't even know how these things uh, evolve. We don't know what workings and where the roots are. Not only what this shooter saw and what he thought, but what drove those things? What opened those doors? And Lord, we do know that whatever they are, 
Whatever the source of them is, it all comes down to the work of our enemy, death and sin. It all comes down to demons and fear. And it all comes down to satanic hatred for mankind and his hatred for you and all that is good. And we know, Lord, that the answer, the salvation, the turning, the change, and the prevention is not by laws, it is not by might, not by power, not by force, not by guns, not by lack of guns. None of those things, Lord, but they are by the Spirit. They are by the outpouring of the Spirit. They are by the turning of our hearts, the turning of our eyes, the turning of our thoughts, the turning of our minds to you because you are love. You are love himself says, do not kill. Love himself says, don't do it. Love himself. Love himself is our defender. So we look to you, Lord. And we're asking, Father, for that great outpouring on our nation. Asking for that great outpouring in Broward County. And wherever the devil has had victory, wherever the devil has brought mayhem and malice and and wherever he has orchestrated operations and works of satanic proportion and death, wherever he has manipulated to taking the life of the innocent. Oh, Lord, whether it be the innocent unborn or the innocent Lord that surround us. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. We pray for the vengeance of our God. We pray that you would rise up as our defender. Rise up, oh God, in the great outpouring, even as Jesus rose up in defiance of the murder of his cousin John. We pray, oh God, the same as Jesus rose up with compassion and he healed their sick. He moved with compassion. He revealed your, your love. He revealed your mercies. And he changed. He changed, Lord. He changed the environment. And we're asking for that. We're asking, Lord, that wherever Wherever these horrible occasions have arisen, whether it's Las Vegas or, or, or Stony Brook or, or, or Houston or, or wherever, Lord, it makes no difference. It makes no difference. Wherever he has raised his ugly hatred head, we thank you, oh, merciful God, that the vengeance of our God is a vengeance that is, that is executed in love. It's a vengeance against the works of darkness to deliver, to deliver, to deliver, and not to deliver only behind what's what has happened, but Lord, to deliver ahead of time to do what is someone had gotten to this young man with the love of Jesus? What if someone had intervened? What if the gospel had come to him? What if? Oh, Father, we pray. Lord, for all the empty hearts, we pray for the brokenhearted. We pray for those, Lord, that Satan has taken hold of and possessed to drive them towards death and to drive them with murder in their hearts. In Jesus' name, we pray right now for intervention. We ask you to uncover the deeds of darkness. We ask you to loose the bands of wickedness. We ask you, Lord, to uncover and to, to reveal. Lord, reveal, reveal, reveal to pastors, ministers. Lord, a move of God nation, a move of the spirit in this nation, a move in our young people, a fire burning, Lord, to turn towards you, to look towards you, and even those who have shaken their fists at you, to know you, to see you, to come to you. Praise you. 
In the name of Jesus, the name which is above every name, we take authority over our own jurisdiction, the jurisdiction of this church, the counties that are around us, Tarrant County, these other counties around us, Wise County, Parker County, Denton County, we plead the blood of Jesus over our schools and over our children. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony in the name of Jesus. We exercise that authority. We are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we refuse to fear. We refuse to fear. We refuse to fear. To fear. We refuse it, devil. We won't have it. We won't have it in this church. We have a zero tolerance policy where fear is concerned. You bow your knee to the name of Jesus, that name which is above every name. And Lord, I pray over our children. I pray over our super kids. I pray over 1440. And thank you that no evil or calamity shall come nigh their dwelling. Satan, we bind you. We bind you now in the name of Jesus. We bind your strategies. Any strategies of the devil that are even in the works right now, we shut you down. We stop you. We use our authority together and say, you are shut down. You are paralyzed. You will not come to pass. That strategy of the evil one shall not come to pass in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. Lord, when we're out driving and we see a school, we plead the blood of Jesus over it. We don't do it in fear. We do it in faith, believing you and receiving protection, protection, protection over our children. Protection. Say protection. Protection over our children. Oh, Ramashaka. Oh, Le Mashangarama Kandeme. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank God for praying in other tongues. Hallelujah. Ronde Makeshte Kiti Alabasha. Rada Bakashikiti Diarama Sandara Geshe. Karama Saba. Our senators, our representatives, we lift up our governors and our state house and state senates. We lift up our city councils. We lift up our school boards. We lift up our school administrations. We lift up our teachers in our classrooms. And first of all, Lord, we repent and ask you to forgive this entire nation. For, for turning our, our backs, for turning foolishly against the counsel of the Word of God. Forgive us, O oh Father, for removing the, the, the very foundation of our protection, the very foundation in our covenant with you. Forgive us, O oh Lord, and for those that have rejected you. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for we have sinned when we rejected you. We've sinned when we said we want a state. A, 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 a government a that we were separated from God. We forgive us for that foolish thought. Forgive us for that deceived idea. Forgive us for allowing that to ever happen in this most austere and glorious nation established and founded on our covenant. Forgive us, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus. And we're asking you, Father, in your great mercies again, that not only would you forgive us, but in your mercies, Lord, you would awaken this nation. That in your mercies, our president, our cabinets, uh, our, our, our judges, our, 
our congresses, our governors, our state governments and local governments, that, oh God, our police officers and departments, and that, God, we would have hearts that are soft and tender and, bless God, cry out to you, and that they would awake to their foolishness, and that we would awake, Lord, to our the limitations of our humanity, and that, Lord, even as 12 police officers have died, Lord, this year, and thou, Lord, these young people, that, Lord, when, how long should it take that our leaders would fall on their knees and cry out and say, oh, God, help us. We know, Father, we know that we know that we know that you are quick. You are faithful to respond. And Lord, we pray because of our prayers, because of the covenant established, Lord, from the beginning of the foundations of this nation, that Lord, you will move upon the people. You'll move upon our president. You'll move upon our his cabinet. You'll move upon our Congress. You'll move upon our governors and our state, our state Congress. You'll move upon our city government. You'll move upon our law enforcement. You'll move upon the FBI, the CIA. You'll move upon our churches and our pastors. You'll move upon the ministers. You'll move upon student leadership. You'll move upon our educators. You'll move upon them and awaken them to fall upon their knees and say, oh God, we cry out for you. You said, Father, to ask and that you would give repentance. Lord, I'm asking you for repentance to fall upon this nation. I'm asking, Lord, for repentance to fall upon the church. I'm asking for repentance to fall upon our lawmakers and our leaders. I'm asking for repentance. Give us repentance, Lord, that we turn from our wicked ways, humble ourselves under your mighty hand, that, oh God, you would move, move in this nation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Thank you, you know Jesus. you're faithful. Thank you. We know Jesus. you're faithful. Thank we you know Jesus. you're faithful. We know you're faithful. Father, we stand on Psalm 91, 10, and 11, and 12. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Father, we release the angels. We, the, we release the angels of protection. Father, we stir ourselves up about the angels, about the angels. And we release the protection angels. We release the angels that are called to go up and gather the harvest. Lord, we are aware of our angels. Every one of us, every one of us tonight are making ourselves aware of our angels. And we believe this scripture. He'll give his angels charge over us, charge over us. They have been commissioned and charged over us to keep us in all of our ways. They'll bear us up. They'll lift us up in their hands. The hands. The hands of the angels. The angels have hands. And those hands lift us up, lest we dash our foot against a stone. So we release the angelic forces. The angelic forces amongst us and around us and we surround our children daily with those angelic forces oh god ila mashakara masetere kish kire besheke di diara masa ha ha e ora masha hela masha kire di brabataska
thank you, Father, that you have, you have been leading us, and we're so grateful. You've been leading us towards holiness. You've been leading us to the secret place. You've been leading us into the divine. You've been leading us and leading us. And oh, we're grateful, grateful, grateful. So that we can walk as children of the light and not children of darkness. Oh, Karishta Kayata. The kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness is yielding more and more and more to Thank darkness you. himself. Thank you. But the kingdom of light is yielding more and more to light himself. And as these two intensify, it will cause those who are bound in darkness to see the light brighter and brighter and brighter still. And regardless of the fools, regardless of the foolish that declare and proclaim, there's no God, there's no God, there's no God. Fewer and fewer and fewer will hear that voice. Fewer and fewer and fewer will acknowledge yeah, that voice. Yeah, yeah. Fewer and fewer and oh, yeah. fewer. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Will value or follow or heed the call. Yeah. It will begin yeah. to be seen more and more ridiculous, yeah. foolish, yeah. empty. Yeah. While the light shines, while the goodness and the glory of his compassion and mercy rise and rise and rise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. O oh, thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires. I will make thy windows of agates and thy gates of carbuncles and all the borders of pleasant stones. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of thy children. In the Amplified Translation it says, All your spiritual children shall be disciples taught of the Lord and obedient to his will. And great shall be the peace an undisturbed composure of your children. In righteousness shalt thou be established. You will be far from oppression, and you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. Behold, they surely gather together, but not by me. Whoever gathers together against you shall fall, for your sake. Behold, I've created the smith that blows the coals and the fire that brings forth an instrument for his work. I have created the waster that destroys. So no weapon that is formed against you. Young people, no weapon that is formed against you. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Oh, Father, I pray over our children right now. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, as we teach them, as we train them in the word of the living God. And help us, Father, to impart to them what it means to walk in the authority of the believer. Help us, Lord, to pass this heritage on to the next generation. What is it that we need to pass along to the next generation? A, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And I certainly have been praying. I have been praying over young people, the young people of our church and praying over the legacy that we leave to them, to you. And one of those legacies is to be able to take authority over the devil wherever you are and to realize that you are protected and that no evil will come near you 
and you can rise. Yeah, I'm pointing to you right now. You can rise up and take your authority in the name of Jesus. You don't have to fear anything. You don't have to fear anybody. You can release your angels and know that you are protected of the Spirit of God. But it's something, it's something that we have to do. God has provided it, but we have to act on it. We have to act on that. We're responsible for walking in that authority. And you, each one of you, because as I've been studying and I've been reading about how many 13-year-olds there were in the Bible that did mighty things, David was one of them. He was about 13 years old when he killed Goliath. Daniel was about 14 or 15 when he said, I will not defile myself. I mean, the Bible is full of people who are your age, who knew how to take their authority and who knew how to take their stand. So I pray over you right now that you take hold of that. And Pastor John, Blake, and Pastor Jen, you guys take hold of this. I'll tell you what, we have a, we have a legacy to leave these young people. We have a responsibility to do that, and I've got it on the inside of me. It's working on the inside of me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You know, some of you, some of you might not know this, and some of you may have heard it before, but I think it's very relevant in the midst of all this. Pastor George and I have been, we were in a situation down in Central America. And in that situation, without telling you the whole story of it, we wound up in the middle of some terrorists and Guatemalan military firing at each other. And we were literally in between them. The terrorists had pulled us off to the side of the road, made us get out of the car. And we had just stepped out of the car. The soldiers came up over the hill and a gun battle ensued. And there were a lot of people in that military truck. There weren't that many of these terrorists that were there, but they had grenade launchers and they had machine guns and they were firing. Bullets were hitting the ground so close to me that it was pelting me. We were laying in gravel. We had fallen to the ground. Gravel was pelting, bouncing back at us. But it did not come near us. It did not come nice. us. Now, <clears throat> I want to talk to you just a moment about a piece, some, just a few things that build you to that place. Okay. You have to invest. Now, what happened to me in that particular moment as I'm laying on the ground, my head was just thinking, la, 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 la thoughts. My head was thinking, ooh, I want to see what's going on. At one point, I'm looking up, looking up. Pastor George grabs me by, literally by the hair of the head, caveman style, and jerks me to the ground, okay? Because my head is just like, ooh, I want to see, I want to see. My heart was beating very fast, as you might imagine. So my face is finally, he's jerked me down into the ground and I'm nose down in gravel and my sunglasses are all on my head and <clears throat> somebody's foot was in my face and I, my, I'm trying to look around, my heart's beating so hard, it's pounding me off the ground. And I could hear somebody praying in tongues, loud. And I was listening to them. And after a little bit, I realized it was me. So the investment, I tell you, when all this was over and it was over, finally, we got a, you know, we, they ran away and the soldiers took out after them and we got in our car and drove on. But as soon as we got out of that intensity of that situation, my first thought was, oh, thank God I didn't say anything stupid. Thank God I didn't say, we're all going to die, we're all going to die. And people say that because that's what they think. And it isn't funny. But thank God I didn't say that. Thank God I didn't, there wasn't screaming, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, with no purpose in it. Power of the Holy Spirit took hold. So my spirit took over. And my head was, my head was doing its thing. My body's doing its thing. My spirit took over. Okay? But there had to be an investment. 
Thank God. Why, why, why was my spirit able to be in charge? There was an investment. Investment of praying in the spirit. Investment of listening to the word. Since I was your age or younger. Investment feeding on grown-up sermons. You know, when I was your age, there was no children's church. There was, I, I don't, the youth group, there were, I, youth group was something you did when you might go on a camp out or something. There was no youth group. We were feeding on this exact same word our parents were. We were able because your spirit will get it. And I was d- determined at a young age, I'm going to get that. And if anybody's going to lead somebody else out, it's going to be me. I'm going to do it. Thank God. And I was in another situation, and the Lord delivered me uh, right from another life-threatening situation. Praise God. But now in our family, different members with family, a little further extended family. Yeah, I can think of one person right now. And he was not living for the Lord. Not living for the Lord. Big time. And he died. Died in a car crash. Not doing what he should have been doing, when he should have been doing it, or where. And it cost him his life. But God was so merciful. And there was another family member that actually had someone come to them and said, I don't know anything, but this might make sense to you. And this woman had had a vision, saw into heaven, and perfectly described this relative. And we knew who she was talking about. And he came to her and he said, tell my family that I wasn't in that car because it it exploded, burned up. He said, tell my family I wasn't in that car when it blew up. Why? God snatched his spirit out because he was saved. Just wasn't walking with God. So you can see that just being, quote, a Christian ain't going to put you over in that victory step. We walk with the Lord. We walk with the Lord. Now, I want to tell you about another family member. And this was someone who's a missionary for the Lord. I mean, burning up with desire and fervor for the Lord. And she died. Died in a car crash. Terrible situation. Well, all the rest of the family, we could have been just consumed threw up our hands and said, why, why, why? And you start asking questions like that at a time like that, it turns you away from the only one who knows the answer. And that's stupid. Let me just be blunt. Never in your questions, no matter what it is, never in your questions turn away from God. I promise you, you're going to encounter things you don't understand. You don't know, and you don't have an answer for. But you can be sure that God is merciful, God is fair, and he never held out on anyone. Anyone. And so we don't know what was in her heart, between her and the Lord. And I'll tell you this, too. We have a very, very conniving vicious, strategic enemy. His name is Satan. And the world is full of situations, people, circumstances, all kinds of things that just cooperate with him. And and my relative that died in that car crash, drunk driver. So he's working things all the time. So what do you do in a situation like that? I mean, it's very evident that we had a situation. We were delivered, and I could, there are plenty of others, but we were delivered. And I think it's relevant because machine guns and bullets involved. We were delivered, but we had another relative that wasn't, but we know he wasn't walking the way he should have been. But we also know we had another relative that was walking with the Lord. But you don't know. The scripture is very clear. You don't know what's in the heart or in the mind of another person. And you are not God and you are not their judge. And I'll tell you something else. You're not his. You're not God's judge either. And what we do, here's how we judge God. Faithful. 
no matter what, this is, this is the faith of Abraham. We judge him faithful. And then when you do that, he'll let you know what you need to know. You're not going to find out everything. Some of it is none of our business. None of your business, none of my business. The secret things, Leviticus says, belong to the Lord. And sometimes that's just where they need to stay. Other times, answers will come. Over time, some things quicker, some things long, longer. Some things he's willing to answer you, but you never get in a position to hear. So you see a lot's involved. There's a lot involved. But here's the thing I want to remind you in whatever situation. In 1 Corinthians verse, chapter 15, I love this. We, this is where we keep our eyes. We're looking to this. Take notice, I tell you, a mystery, a secret truth, an event decreed by the hidden purpose of God. We shall not all fall asleep. We're not going to all. And that's all death is for the believer. It's just fall asleep. It's a blink and you wake up and you're not here. You're there. That's it. That's it. We've done all, all the pain of dying has been done. But for the unbeliever, for the one that doesn't know Jesus, it's a ripping and a tearing that lasts through eternity. And so he says, in a moment, the twinkling of an eye, the sound of the last trump, a trumpet will sound, and the dead that are in Christ will be raised immortal, and we shall be changed. And this perishable part of us, this part, will put on an imperishable or an undying nature. Suddenly your bodies will no longer be able to die. Marvelous. We'll put on immortality. And when this puts on, when the perishable puts on the imperishable, this natural body puts on immortality. And this that was capable of dying puts on a freedom from death. Then shall be fulfilled the scripture that says, death is swallowed forever in victory. So here's the attitude that we take. That's, we know that's coming. But we take a faith attitude now. And here's our attitude. How many of y'all like attitude? Good attitude. Good attitude. Yeah. How many of you have ever had a conversation with your parents about a not so good attitude? Yeah. Okay. But here's the attitude of the believer. Parents, kids, viewers. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where's your sting? What do you got? If you hit me with your best shot, I got victory no matter what. You never win. You're 60. You can take my life in this very moment, and I'm on the victory side. If you don't get to take my life in this very moment, I'm on the victory side. Sometimes there's pressure. The devil, all of that is to confuse you or to bring you fear or to lie to you, manipulate you, whether it's a possessed person with a gun somewhere or just someone trying to get you off track. It doesn't matter. You stay on the victory side. You stay on the Jesus side. You stay on the word of God side. And don't depend only on your pastor, you know, your youth pastor or Pastor George or us or your parents. Don't depend on them to be the only source of teaching you what the Bible says. You know, that's just uh, people, that, young people that do that. And, you know, you know, you're not like this. You're not like everybody else, guys. I'm going to tell you that. You know that, right? You know you're not. How many of you want to be just like everybody else and just go the way everybody else goes? Nobody. No takers? Good for you. But you feed on the Word of God. And you can read your Bible. I want to tell you some things. There's some persecution that goes with it. People used to make fun of me in school because I took my Bible to school. I remember my Bible. I had a little one. Fell out of my locker. Seventh grade. Fell out of the locker. Kids are walking by and it got kicked down the hall. So everybody knew I had a Bible. And uh, so people made fun of me at times. 
But I want to tell you, a number of those people over the years, two things happened. A number of those people over the years thought, said, if I could just get to Terry Copeland, I know I, I get some help. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? And then the other thing was, was the way God favored me and made ways for me. I mean, he promoted me. And you know, I wasn't like a giant outcast in school. No, student council, editor of the paper. You know, I didn't have to hide under a rock. But there are a lot of people, including my friends, a lot of my friends that made fun of me. So what? Big deal. It's only big if you make it be big. When you can stand against stuff that is, that is, it doesn't matter, you'll be able to stand strong in situations when it does. You know what to say. You, you will know what to say. I know you. And you will stand in faith and you'll be, it, this, this, the spirit of that scripture I just read to you will come up in you. And you're not afraid. And parents, don't you be afraid. You cause more harm being afraid of what might happen to your kids than you, than you can any other way. I remember when my kids were small. There were times I had to, it was, it's like my dad used to call it being like in a flight simulator. And I would work, th process through when an image would come to my mind. You know, when they're really small, maybe it was a swing set falling over. They get a little older and they start driving. Well, you know all the, the thoughts that come to parents, you know, and just crazy stuff that can come up. And the fear, fear of them getting, you know, uh, uh, their feelings hurt or a car wreck or drugs or failing a class or whatever those things are. So when those things would come to my mind, I finally learned, let that, let that, don't ignore it. But I would play it out on purpose by faith. And I would see myself with the word speaking to it. Answer it out loud. Answer it out loud. But then I would come down, and then I would let it come around, though, to this final thing. Yeah, but what if they died? Yeah, but what if they did? Yeah, but what if they got sick and died? What if? Well, my answer to that is another question. What if? wake up with Jesus. It's this eternal, minded of, the etern minded of eternity. Our Christianity is not the game we play, and the label we wear, the t-shirt we have at camp. It's not what it's about. We're talking about an awareness of forever. Yes. And so we're not afraid. Amen. We're not afraid. So that doesn't mean that that's unimportant. You understand what I'm saying? But I can't, I, you settle things so that the devil has no weapon to use against you. He cannot move you into fear. Not move you into fear. You know? Tears come and emotions are affected and you feel it. Okay. But don't let that suck you down. You know, after a while, Blow your nose, wipe your eyes, dust yourself off and say, bless God, I'm going on. Bless God, I'm going on. Amen. And I'm, if, I, if I miss something somewhere, he's going to show it to me. I'll find out what it is. But there's greatness often comes. Great, greatness in God often comes at, af, after you've had to press through. It just what would to other people be insurmountable challenges. And don't let things that really aren't that big be big. Just, just be an overcomer. Not in yourself, but in who? Say it. Say it like you mean it. Yeah, that's who. And the Bible, in reading what he had to say and learning who you are in him, it doesn't even matter if you really, you don't even understand really what that means. It's a matter. You just read it anyway. You feed on it. It'll come, and I'll tell you, it'll come up out of in your heart, come up out of your mouth, and you find yourself, you'll find yourself pointed, your finger pointed in the face of opposition with the power and the strength of victory. Amen. Hallelujah. I've had my down times. I've had my low times. I've had my times when I needed somebody else to stand with me because I, I did slip up. I did get overwhelmed. I, I, it got to me. Something got to me. But we have each other. You have a church. You have a church family. You have parents and pastors and friends. 
And you want to be that for other people as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we cry with those that are crying. I mean, we've got to, we've got to feel, I want to feel in my heart and be touched by, by what that's. But I don't, I, I've still got to come, got to get down and cry with that person with victory in my heart. Otherwise, I have nothing to lift them with. Does that help you? Does that help anybody? Before you go, 1440, guys, I want you to come out here. Let's just worship the Lord together. Let's just lift our hands up. Everybody stand up in the auditorium here. And let's just go before the Lord and just thank God for his love. Thank God for the love that he shed abroad in our hearts. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, go ahead. Thank you. Father. Oh, he loves us. Oh, how. Father, we honor you, and we glorify you, and we magnify you together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 1440, you guys can go this way. Follow those pastors with hands raised, and give them a great hand as they go. Glory to God. Thank you for coming up here with us. Praise God. Pastor Greg, why don't you make your way up here? Where is Pastor Greg? Go ahead and be seated, if you would. And we're going to go ahead and receive our offering, evening offering tonight. So, Pastor Greg is, there he is. He's making his way. Praise God. Praise God. I told you something rose up in me while we were praying, Pastor. I am a father and a husband and a citizen and a brother and a dad and an uncle. And Satan has no authority. <laughs> <laughs> 
whatsoever. Jesus took every bit of his authority, right? I'm not going to yield my children. I'm not going to yield any authority to him any longer in this nation or in my family. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That's what I'm standing on. Amen? All right. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the offering very quickly. There was a really dark time, and I'm not going to go into it because Pastor will touch on it, by a name, a guy by the name of Claudius II of Rome. He outlawed Christianity. He's a very bad guy. But he'll tell you about that in just a moment. The scripture says in Proverbs 14 that a wise woman builds her house. And if that's true, and it is, then a wise man builds his woman. There's your Valentine motivation, gentlemen. For tonight, Jesus referred to husbands and wives and brides and bridegrooms and marriage and linked himself to that and the church. Paul doubles down on that all the way through scripture. And Jesus refers to it. Paul refers to it. In that day, marriage was a covenant and it was a covenant arrangement. Once it was agreed upon by the parties of the first part with the parties of the second part, the father and the bride and the groom would partake of a glass of wine together. And then they would do that in remembrance. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? And that's exactly what our communion is. They do this as a covenant in remembrance. The groom then would give gifts to her. When Jesus left, he gave gifts unto men. And he would give gifts to the bride. And then he would go with the father and he would prepare a place. And when, the, when it was all ready, the father would send him and the wedding party then would go out to meet him, go out in front of him to get her. But he would never go into the house. It's a picture of the rapture. She would, by faith, go out to meet him when she hears the call. Come on. And Jesus said, when I return, will I find faith? That word for the bride adorning herself, because that's what she's doing when he's gone. That word in the Greek for adorning means to snip, to snuff the wick. We would say it like this. It means to turn out the light. You're living at a place that you're so ready. You're just, all you have left to do is turn out the light when he calls and step out to meet him. And she now does something different. She brings gifts unto him. She brings all the things that she has worked for and, and sown and believed and lays them at his feet. Guys, that's a day that is very close at hand for each and every one of us. And our giving is a gift just like that. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7 says this, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. When you love you give for God so loved that he and we're like our father aren't we and so tonight you have the opportunity to have a little valentine note for the father those of you that are in the auditorium and you want an envelope there's one in the seat right in front of you or an usher will hand you one and you get to write your valentine gift to the father tonight come on when you love you give is that right? And this is part of the bride giving and laying up treasures in heaven. If you're watching us online, emic.org slash or emic.tv slash give, emic.org slash give. I do that every Sunday. I should know it, right? <laughs> emic.org slash give, or you can text to give. Text the number 36609. 36609. Keyword EMIC, the dollar amount. Example, EMIC. 25,000. Amen? Father, we thank you for the opportunity to show our love. We thank you for the opportunity to give back, to lay up treasures in heaven. And Father, I ask that you bless this offering and everyone that sows into it here in this house and online, that you pour out abundantly, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that this offering explodes in their lives in seed form, some 30, some 60, some hundredfold. This is a seed, Father, because we love you. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen.
Who breaks the power of sin's darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Amen. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King. Give God glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, go ahead and be seated, if you would, please. And uh, this evening, we wanted to do something a little bit different that we had planned, uh, where considering it being Valentine's Day and the love of God is among us, and there are so many stories, so many love stories of uh, those who have met and, and have married and Terry and I, are we are a walking love story. I think that we, <laughs> I, I was thinking today back on just when I first saw her and when I first was attracted to her and, and how we began to date each other and I can feel her eyes on me right now. <laughs> and, and I remember at ORU, uh, you know, one of the first things that I did, I played piano and one of the first things I did for her was to um, take her to one of the practice rooms there at the uh, ORU music department and I, I played for her and I sang for her. I should have rehearsed for tonight but I didn't. But uh, remember that John Denver song, Lady, Lady, My Sweet Lady? He sang, I sang that for her. Anyway, so tonight though what we wanted to do was interview a couple from this church who met together here, grew up together and now they are working together in the ministry. So would you please welcome Matthew and Mary Kurth. Give them a great hand. Hey, this is awesome. <laughs> hey, please, please be seated. This is awesome. This is kind of like, um, oh, I don't know, who would be doing this, Oprah or something. So, so we're so interested in knowing your story. Now, if I remember right, you've been here longer than this one, uh, right? A little so, bit. Um, let's see. I've been here since 96. Okay. And Do we so, have pictures to show of you during that time? No? No not footage? here, probably, no. no. That was before cameras. <laughs> oh. <laughs> before cameras. <laughs> At least digital ones. Digital, so, yeah. So, how old were you when you came? Uh, I was 11. 11. So, super kids. Super kids, okay. What was super kids like in your eyes when you were 11? Well, it was—I mean, it was amazing. It was—it was, it was uh, a lot of fun. Um, I was really only there for about a year, 
but um, it, it was kind of, I guess it was the early stages of Super Kid Academy and, and mm -hmm. um, the program. And Dana and Linda were, you know, uh, Commander Dana and Linda. And so it was, it was always a lot of fun. And I was always uh, really involved, I guess, you know, from being a Super Kid and then after, after we left, volunteering and all that kind of stuff. So it was, I loved it. So Mary, when did you come in to all this here? So my first official service at Eagle Mountain was actually Valentine's night. It was a Wednesday. Wow. wow. 2000. Wow, so happy anniversary. Happy yeah. anniversary. <laughs> hey. So you've been here 18 years. Mm -hmm. 18 years. And it was wow. Word Force then. Word yes. Pastor Joseph and Canfield. So, I still say Word Force. It's been 1440 for the longest time, but just last week I told somebody we were going to do something in Word Force and they went, what? <laughs> that was the name of our high school group to start with. Was mm -hmm. What was a junior high? Because I forgot. Faith Corps. Faith Corps. Faith Corps. Yeah. Faith Corps. Yeah. Faith, Faith Corps. Corps and Word Force. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you came and you joined you, when you you started off then in Word Force. Yes, I was in ninth grade and um, got plugged in right away. Just started volunteering. I joined the newcomer team in Word Force and uh, the worship team there and spent a lot of time there. And then I started volunteering in Super Kids as well. So you were a high school student, junior high and high school student helping the younger kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where did the <laughs> love begin to bud? What happened? Really, all through high school, we were friends and hung out. Um, did you go to school together as well? No, we didn't. Just, um, just church? Just church. And I was actually really good friends with Matthew's sister, Alicia. And so we always were in groups and stuff together, but I was never, like, attracted to him, really, or anything like that. I actually, I oh, thought he okay. was that's I thought no he was a snob. No reflection on Matthew. That's just prayers of the pastor working right there. <laughs> I actually thought he was a snob because he never really talked to me. Because I didn't talk to girls, really. <laughs> <laughs> so. So how did, when, when, when did the light come on? I guess it would have been after we graduated. The really. year we graduated, was, um, yeah. Okay. I think the first time we really started kind of hanging out more and, uh, being, becoming interested in each other, if you will, <laughs> um, I think was, let's see, it was, I guess it was sort of been word force, but it was the, there was a camping trip. The youth group went on a camping trip for, it was the Passion One, one day, day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I remember that. Thing in Sherman. I remember. And so, yeah. I, I don't know, it was like two or three days, I don't know, something mm -hmm. like that. And so, there was obviously a lot of time we spent to together. hang out, yeah. yeah. And so I think that was probably the first time. Mm -hmm. And then that summer, we were both on the Super Kid team. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, we were doing three conventions. And so essentially, we spent all summer oh. either in training or prepping or getting ready for convention, doing convention, getting ready for convention, doing, you know, so all summer. So you were Anaheim, Fort Worth, Great Lakes. and Great, Great Lakes. Lakes. Mm -hmm. Wow, so what, what summer? Yeah, summer? what did you do in Super Kid? What were you, for conventions, what, were, what team were you on? Well, I was the tech guy. The t Surprise. You know, we're, we're <laughs> Matthew's one of our television directors now, yeah. so Super Kids was good training. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mary? I was on the worship team, the dance team, I was in the teaching rotation, and then as I got older, I um, was trained under Miss Val to take over registration, and I was over the floor and all okay, that. Okay, so let's think about what you're doing now. You're on the worship team, mm -hmm. then the registration team, mm -hmm. and what else is it you're doing now that you, <laughs> what, that you were doing in Super Kids? Production, Production, Production team, yeah. the mm -hmm. te teaching team. I'm telling you, Super Kids and our training program is amazing because they just thought they were doing their thing coming up through Super Kids, and look, it was preparing them for the things that God had for them it right really here, was. even here. I really, I remember telling Commander Dana at my very first Southwest Believers Convention, he asked me what I thought of it, and I go, I love this. I could do this for a living. <laughs> and here I am. Oh, wow. It was, it's total fulfillment of, I was prophesying over myself and you didn't really even were. know it. You know, I just. You really were. So go back to when the light mm -hmm. went on again. Yeah, he was saying that's the light part. <laughs> Well, that summer, um, 
it was just a growing relationship and another p part of this is neither one of us had ever dated anyone else before wow. and so we both um were first timers <laughs> so. and it worked yeah. okay so tell us a little more yeah what like, convention was it? which which was the convention that really oh man I think it was really after conventions ended. Oh uh, yeah, I would say maybe a little bit like towards the end of Great Lakes. Yeah, we went to like some carnival or something. I think. Yes, yeah. on our day off. And some movie, I think too, or something. But it was kind of like after the meeting was over. I want to say it was the year when we were in Gr Green Bay, probably. Mm -hmm. And um, the gr city of Green Bay revolves around their football team, right? So it was the preseason, and we couldn't have Saturday night service because. They had to take over all the parking or something like that. So we had, that. we had like that afternoon evening off. Yeah. Yep. So that was probably maybe I don't know if we'd say mm -hmm. it escalated a little bit mm -hmm. then. And then all my friends started talking. You know, Matthew's talking to you a lot. He doesn't really talk to to girls. <laughs> Do you think he likes you? And I'm like, no, I, I don't. I don't think so. We're just friends. You know, yep. I'm his sister's friend. We're just friends. But we just kept hanging out more and more and. Um, started talking more and at that time instant messenger was the thing do you remember instant messenger you know and you'd log on and see if anybody else was online oh, wow. to chat <laughs> yeah because you didn't really text then they we just had the beginnings of the flip phone that was before facebook <laughs> yeah and... it was before facebook and all yeah. that stuff so we would instant message in the evenings just so did so did your church life change after this? Did these conventions and all of a sudden there's a different reason to come to church? Maybe an enhanced a little enhanced church attendance? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, we were I, we were I think both of us. I know I was for sure. We were so plugged in volunteering and stuff like that. We were already coming a lot anyways. We we're pretty much here every time. I think the doors are open just about. So definitely. They probably didn't change too much. Church no, but maybe even more incentive. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> I was thinking. Yes, more incentive. <laughs> So finally, uh, we were actually at a soccer game at Lake Country Christian School, and um, his, we were all riding together, and his, his, our friends locked us out of the car and said, we're not letting you in until you ask her out. Because every, they knew that he wanted to ask me out, but he was just so shy about it and first timer, and so his friends decided to help him out. Oh. And locked us out of the car until he finally asked me out. <laughs> I don't think it took that long, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's turning red. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know so this else thing is progressing. Mm -hmm. It's it's progressing. Mm -hmm. It's going. When when did you realize that you guys were serious enough to where, gosh, it's we we could be married. When did that happen? What? Ha how did how you long? get to that part? I don't know when I, if I could pinpoint exactly when. Um, I just knew since this was the first relationship that we we talked right at the beginning that we're dating because we think that mm -hmm. this could be a marriage relationship, and we yeah. talked to our parents, and our parents were in agreement, and just our guide the whole time was following peace. And that was really just our thing. And so yeah. it was, it felt natural, it felt like a fit. Suddenly he was my best friend, knew more about me than anyone else could finish my sentences. And, you know, our, our vision was so aligned and our gifts complemented each other so well. And yeah. I don't know exactly where down the line it happened, it just happened. Yeah. So yeah. neither one of you have ever really left church, have you? Mm -mm. Just stay right here and now tell us, of course, how long was that before you were married? When, when did? Yeah, when did you get married? So we. It was, a, it was, it was almost, 2006. So three. We dated about th three years. They dated and we were engaged for six months, and um, were married in May of 2006. So mm -hmm. three years after. And so, meeting. now now tell us about the. The, uh, the children, what your your children's and their names and ages, and it's so wonderful. <laughs> so we have three uh, lovely girls. Um, Aiden is eight. Uh, McKenna is six, seven. She's turned seven. Seven. And Sadie is five. 
So when you take them and drop them off at Super Kids, are you, do you find yourself scanning the rooms going, maybe him, maybe him, maybe him? <laughs> you know, Commander Jen's Levi really hits it off with Sadie pretty well. So we, we're watching that out, you know, so. That would be great. Yep, that yep. would be great. <laughs> Well, is there anything else you have, any advice that you have for, whether it's teenagers or parents? Well, I want, I want to say oh, something yeah, no, excuse first, me. though. The, the, um, the relationship that the two of you have is so unique in that you really do work together. There's a, mm -hmm. there, and this is what's so important, and this is what I feel like we, we operate in. There's a chemistry between the two of you, a chemistry of not only the, the love that you have for each other, but the, the interest that you have the taking care of the children, the calling. Um, I mean, I've seen times when you've had to work so many hours and Matthew was the one taking the girls to eat and taking care of them. And he's never, he's never complained, griped as much as I, I mean, I'm not around, but he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't. seem to complain well, about I it. I just say, so, and Mary and Aubrey are very close friends. Well, Aubrey has two little girls, now three, but just two that just makes all five of them just very tight little stair steps and they're all little buddies and great and so Mary and Aubrey were off together somewhere and I said where are the girls Matthew has them excuse me Matthew has them I said, well, so I asked later how did that work out she said it was amazing we got back and they had been fed bathed dressed and were in bed asleep whoa sir I'm telling you it, it was, was amazing it was his training in super kids it was super cute training. Well, and I have a kind of big family. Yeah, he has so a lot of siblings. He's oldest sibling. Just, I don't know. Oh, just go with the flow. I'm still impressed, and we'd like for you to teach, like, some motherhood classes, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> this is amazing. So go ahead. Give us, give us the advice now. What is your advice for the lasting relationship that you have, obviously the love that you have for each other? How can you advise young people um, about that, and what are, what are you, what's your secret? Um, hmm, good question. I, I don't think I'm an expert on, on this by any means. I think one of the things that's worked for us is really being a team and it's a partnership, um, give and take and just, you know, where one person's strong, the other person may be weak and just helping fill in those, those areas and really being there for each other and um, kind of keeping the end goal in mind of, uh, maybe not the end goal, but keeping um, the family uh, goal together, you know, like here's the goal that's down the road. I can do this, you can do that. And let's work together to to uh, to get it done. And there's, you know, there's certain things that one person may like to do around the house, or you know, like I end up doing a lot of dishes or whatever. But you know, I don't really like I, you do a lot of laundry or whatever. You know, just work together, and um, it's a team. It's a team effort, I think, and that's that's what. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Yes. Oh, that's yeah. oh, 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 wait, wait. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yes. Wow. Let's give it oh, up for Mary yeah. Matthew. I wish you could take credit for that. Oh, I didn't come up with that. Well, thank you guys. So what about you? What's, what's, your, what's your part of the secret? I agree. And just being aware of, um, I think uh, we have different love languages as well. So learning. Okay. how to communicate well with each other and really like he we don't have any secrets from each other we, we're one one team 100 percent and knowing how he likes affirmation and how i like affirmation and that's helped a lot as we've grown um he's acts of service and so sometimes i'm just sit down and just spend time with me that's what you know <laughs> and so learning and growing in that but I think teamwork is a huge deal in the marriage too. I remember when, when we knew we were having our third, he was like, all right, we can't be man on man anymore. We gotta go to zone defense. <laughs> <laughs> and just keep, keeping in mind, you know, this is, we're awesome. in this together. That's but, awesome. And so it, it's a big- Oh, that's really part. good. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you a business question while we're sitting here. Is that countdown to the, do the bottom of the hour or is that to the, Studio B. That's to eight, the bottom of the hour. That's the bottom. So we're out at the. Okay. Excuse us while we talk. <laughs> I just wanted to check and see, but they are they are so so valuable to us, so valuable to the church. So many of the things that you see 
in the production sense. Even with these balloons that you're seeing here and putting all this together. For the sets at Christmas and I mean, we have a team and it's not just them but these guys have they have a, a heavy hand in a lot of the things you see in the projects that happen and the events that occur and a lot of the things that Mary, that are not done by Mary, it's done by somebody that Mary trained. And so we are really, really blessed that the Lord brought these kids to us when they were little kids. <laughs> They're still kids to us, but... but but grown up kids, so we're just so thankful. And of course, Matthew from the technical side. Absolutely. And the creative side. Very, a creative, very creative individual in what he does in video and the sense of design that he has. The two of them have become a valuable team to our church, and we, we so deeply appreciate them. And they're like the Energizer bunnies. There's just, <laughs> there's just no stopping. And I'll see them sometimes. I, I remember when I saw you one day, it was actually your day off, and you came in, it was down in the executive, uh, well, it was the lunchroom over in the executive building. And you came in, and it was like the girls were stair-stepped behind you, <laughs> following you, helping you. Oh it goodness. was after uh, the, 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 the Fall Fest, I think. And you came back in to pick up some things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to be able to see people like this who serve so diligently and so well and to watch a marriage that is so successful, um, we just wanted to bring that to you tonight. <laughs> and that truly is a love story. <laughs> so join us next time. Do we have, do, you know, we didn't get to do everything we wanted to do. Do we have the graphic available to us of Love Story? Can we put the graphic up there? We we're supposed to do an a introduction with our graphics. So is it, is it out so there? Do we have it? She worked so hard getting that together. We don't together have it. Oh, from, okay. No, uh, well, all right. Here we go. We'll find out later. I'm not back there doing my job. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not that's, it, but that's that sweet. Wasn't it. That's that wasn't sweet, it. That wasn't it, but that's close. <laughs> anyway, give these guys another great hand. And I just want to let you know how much I, I love you and I appreciate you. We, we have a good marriage. Go ahead and be seated for the next couple of moments. We have, we've got a very strong marriage together. We work, we are working constantly with each other. And when we stepped, even stepped into the, the additional position that we walk in here as CEOs of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, we did it together, we do it together. And uh, we, we actually have to work with each other. The only thing that we have a problem with is, is trying to, to turn off the work. And there are times, there's an international sign that I have at our house, and, and that is I'll, I'll take something and I'll go, okay, okay, Terry, I'm clocking out right now. I'm clocking out. I put a sign on the door from the garage going into the house that is a big yellow sign. It said, no work zone. And it had a big circle with a line yeah, through so the middle of it. So I come through the door and, he, and there's this giant sign. I was like, oh, that is so great. And I came in. He said, this is a no work zone. As soon as I show you this, this thing happened right here. And I just, it's just take a minute. It's just take a minute. Just won't be very long at all. Okay, okay. So we're looking at it. We get finished with that. And then his phone buzzes and he said, well, that can't be Brother Copeland. He's in... Where was he in Green Bay? I Green think Bay, yeah. yeah, he's up there. See, that can't be Brother Copeland. Chicago, Chicago. Chicago. And he, that can't be him. He's in Chicago. And then he said, "How is that possible? It's Brother <laughs> a, Brother Copeland." So you know, work zone comes and goes. But anyway, through it all, through, the, through it all, well, we babe, do. You know, we do relax and we do wear jeans. Some people are so shocked when they see us in jeans. We do wear jeans. I've had people tell me, "Been say now, are you who? Are, you look so familiar." Well, Pastor George and Terry, Eagle Mountain, yeah. I said, I go to your church. I've been going to your church for 10 years. What, what do you come with a blindfold on or what is that? <laughs> well, I've just never seen you in jeans. It's like, how many people you know them by the, by the, the whether their knees show or not? You so know? The, one of the thing, one of the fun thing, we got like a minute left. Well, to, we, but what, we get, need to throw it to Greg too. Oh, we do? Well, yep. she told me that it goes right to the bottom of the hour. But that goes That's for the what internet. the clock does goes to the bottom of the yard. They All right. have things to say. All right. Well, good. Anyway, so people wonder, you know, what do you do for fun? On Sunday afternoons Meets after me. this is all over, We'll, we'll go have lunch or something. We'll get home maybe 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and we will put on our pajamas and sit on the couch 
and we will turn on <laughs> turn on Amazon to look for a movie to watch, and all we'll watch is previews for two hours, <laughs> and then go. It's too late. It's time to go to bed. So, anybody else do that? Watch previews? Yeah, previews. All right. All right. Well, play some music behind us. There, everybody, stand up. Everybody, stand up. What? What? What's that? Can I close it from here? All right, I'm going to close it from here. I've got 24 seconds left here. And so we want to let you know, happy Valentine's Day from Pastor George and Terry. We love you. We bless you. We are so thrilled for such a marvelous church. And all of you that are watching us, we are so grateful that you are with us. And so as we go tonight, love one another. And we love you. God loves you. God loves you. And Jesus is.